Since the war in Ukraine began, Turkey's President Erdogan has happily played both sides. Despite being a member of NATO and a candidate country for EU membership, Turkey has refused to join in with Western-led sanctions and has instead positioned itself as a possible mediator between the two sides. However, over the past couple of weeks it looks like Erdogan has finally ditched Putin. With Turkey suspending Russian credit cards, halting all military cooperation, lifting its veto on Sweden and Finland NATO membership application, and even demanding that Crimea be returned to Ukraine. In this video we're going to look at Ankara's relationship with Moscow, why it's broken down and what this all means for Putin. In a breakthrough, Russian and Ukrainian delegations met for peace talks in Istanbul on March 29th, as the war entered its second month, with casualties piling up on both sides. Turkey also hosted the foreign ministers of Russia and Ukraine in Antalya in March. One of the most important outcomes of Turkish mediation was when Turkey, the United Nations, Russia and Ukraine signed a deal in Istanbul to reopen certain Ukrainian ports to release grain that had been stuck for months because of the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war, a development that has been crucial in responding to a growing global food crisis. Turkey is one of the most active countries working to ensure a permanent ceasefire between Ukraine and Russia. Its delicately balanced act of assuming a role as a mediator by keeping communication channels with both warring sides open provides a glimmer of hope in diplomatic efforts to find a solution and achieve peace in the Ukraine crisis. With its unique position of having friendly relations with both Russia and Ukraine, Turkey has won widespread praise for its push to end the war. Since the beginning of the conflict, Ankara has offered to mediate between the two sides and host peace talks, underlining its support for Ukraine's territorial integrity and sovereignty. While Ankara has opposed international sanctions designed to isolate Moscow, it also closed its straits to prevent some Russian vessels from crossing through them. Most recently, Turkey enabled a prisoner swap between the warring countries. You get the idea throughout the war in Ukraine, Erdogan has been happy to play both sides as long as it's been in his immediate self-interest. Turkey, a NATO member, has conducted a diplomatic balancing act since Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24. Ankara opposes Western sanctions on Russia and has close ties with both Moscow and Kiev, its Black Sea neighbors. It has also been criticized, Russia's invasion and sent armed drones to Ukraine. The Turkish ministry said on Saturday it had not recognized Russia's annexation of Crimea in 2014, adding that it rejects Russia's decision to annex the four regions. Such illegitimate fate accompli will not be recognized by the international community, the Turkish foreign ministry said in a statement. Turkish President Erdogan has been using his open relations with both Moscow and Kiev to try and set up direct truce talks. But Russia's decision to hold the annexation votes and partially mobilize reservists signals the potential start of an even more violent chapter in the war. Erdogan told world leaders at the United Nations on Tuesday that both Moscow and Kiev needed help finding a dignified way out of the crisis. So we can clearly see that over the past few weeks, Turkey's attitude towards Russia has shifted. Last week, Two of Turkey's largest banks presumably under direction from Ankara announced that they wouldn't be accepting Mir cards. For those of you who don't know, Mir, which translates to world in Russian, is a Russian payment processing system that many Russians resorted to after Visa and MasterCard stopped offering services for Russian accounts. Since the war began, the US has been pressuring Turkey to stop accepting Mir cards, but Turkey has resisted because well lots of Russians were spending cash in Turkey and that was good news for Turkey's faltering economy. Most significantly in his most recent interview with PBS, NewsHour, Erdogan said that Russia should withdraw from all Ukrainian territory including Crimea. While Erdogan paid lip service to Turkey's alleged neutrality insisting that the war wouldn't be won by taking sides, he issued his most explicit criticism of Putin's invasion, to date saying that Russia's invasion cannot be justified and that all of Ukraine as well as Crimea should be returned to Ukraine. Putin was hoping that Erdogan would prevent Sweden and Finland from joining NATO, but that just didn't happen. 
NATO leaders will formally invite Finland and Sweden to join the alliance after Turkey lifted its veto on their membership. The historic deal, following Turkey's agreement to a memorandum with the two Nordic countries, underscored how the war in Ukraine has backfired for President Vladimir Putin, subverting Russian efforts to weaken NATO and pushing Sweden and Finland, which were neutral and non-aligned for decades, into the alliance's arms. After weeks of talks, capped by an hours-long meeting in Madrid, in June this year, President Erdogan agreed to lift his block on Sweden and Finland's membership, in return for a set of actions and promises that they will act against terrorism and terrorist organizations. Both Finland and Sweden had been militarily non-aligned for many years, but decided to apply to join the alliance after Russia invaded Ukraine in February. With Russia attacking a neighbor, both countries felt vulnerable, though Sweden, with a long tradition of neutrality, was more hesitant. So why is this? Why is Erdogan suddenly soured on Putin? Well it's probably just self-interest. As is usually the case Erdogan just doesn't think Putin is a good bet anymore. The war in Ukraine isn't going well. Russia's current account deficit is widening and his strategy of escalation has spooked even a validly neutral countries like India. At the moment, siding with the US and the West looks like a better bet from Erdogan's point of view, which is presumably why he's bowed, to US pressure over sanctions. Had Russia carried out its invasion as planned, toppling the Ukrainian government and consolidating control over much of the country, Turkey would have lost the relationship it had cultivated with Kiev, and many elements of its current engagement would have been rendered moot. A quick Russian victory, or even a more successful initial Russian air campaign, would have preempted the possibility of Turkish drones playing their high-profile role in the initial weeks of the war. If Russia had set up a puppet government in Kiev, Moscow would have had little need for Turkey to serve as an intermediary in negotiating with it. Even in a different scenario, where Russia was seeking to impose a victor's peace on a defeated but still independent Ukrainian government, any Turkish role in the process would have looked decidedly unpalatable to the country's NATO's allies. Nonetheless, the West shouldn't be complacent here, this is just Erdogan looking out for himself, and his recent comments over Greece, should make it clear, that he still has a fair few bones, to pick with his NATO counterparts. Nonetheless, it's still bad news for Putin, especially in the context of ongoing struggles on the battlefield, and anti-conscription upset within Russia. Whatever policies Turkey has carried out, with regard to Ukraine, it has carried out against this backdrop. To the extent Ankara's advocates believe the West should be pleased with these policies, that suggests a more solicitous approach to Erdogan was not necessary. To the extent Washington is still frustrated with Turkey's behavior, it can at least take comfort in the fact it is a consequence of Russia's failure.